Hey everybody, welcome back. Users ask me all the time how they can use Apache NiFi to take advantage of Apache Kafka's exactly want semantics. NiFi is one of the easiest and most common ways to get data into and out of Kafka. But what we're talking about here is pulling data from one Kafka topic, doing some sort of processing, perhaps we're doing some routing, some transformation, some filtering, maybe doing some enrichment on that data, and then we're pushing the result into another Kafka topic. And we want to make sure that for every record or message in the source topic, we have exactly one correlating message in the destination topic. NiFi has never really supported Kafka's exactly once semantics. It really didn't fit very well with the NiFi architecture because NiFi provides a loose coupling between components on the canvas and it provides persistence of the data across restarts. Kafka's exactly want semantics really require a much tighter coupling between the Kafka consumer and the Kafka producer. And they work better in a stateless environment where the data is not persisted across restarts. The NiFi community has been working really hard on a new capability referred to as stateless NiFi. It provides a different architecture to run your data flows in with different design decisions. And this architecture is really much better suited for the exactly once semantics. But it hasn't been very easy for users to consume or to use. That is, until now. With version 1.15 of Apache NiFi, we are introducing tons of new features, including the ability to use Kafka's exactly once semantics. Now, before I jump into exactly how all of these things work, I want to take some time to look at some of the problems that cause NiFi's architecture not really to jive very well with Kafka's exactly once semantics. That way, you'll understand not just how to build a data flow to take advantage of these exactly once semantics, but you'll also understand why we need to build the data flow the way we do. But if you're not interested in the why and you just want to know how to do it, feel free to jump ahead. Now, in order for NiFi to support Kafka's exactly want semantics, we have three big obstacles that we have to overcome. Firstly, NiFi persists all data across restarts. Now, this is hugely important for a huge percentage of the use cases. But in this situation, we can have a case where NiFi pulls some data from Kafka and begins processing that data. But before the processed results are pushed to Kafka, NiFi gets restarted. Now in this situation, upon restart, NiFi will go ahead and finish processing that data and then send the process results to Kafka. Meanwhile, the Kafka consumer will have its offsets reset. That's going to cause the consumer to then re-pull the same data and we're going to end up with data duplication. Secondly, Kafka's exactly want semantics require a tight coupling between the consumer and the producer. This is important because if there is a failure when you're publishing the results to Kafka or there's some sort of processing failure along the way, we need to make sure that the Kafka consumer can be rolled back so that that data can be processed again. NiFi provides a loose coupling between components which makes it really difficult to provide that information to the Kafka consumer in order for it to roll back. Thirdly, we have to deal with the notion of data splitting and reordering. Now for a really simple flow, like just consuming data from Kafka, maybe converting JSON to Avro and then pu publishing the results back, that's pretty easy to handle. But for a more complex flow that results in data being split apart and reordered, it becomes a lot more complicated to support that in NiFi with exactly want semantics. Now we could support just these simple use cases, but that would really limit the capabilities that make you love NiFi in the first place. So what we want to come up with is a much richer, more holistic solution. So now we have three issues that we have to tackle. Avoiding duplicate processing, 
dealing with a tighter coupling between the Kafka consumer and the producer and the data processing and data reordering. Now, Stateless NiFi is an alternate runtime engine that is capable of running a data flow that we design and build in traditional NiFi, but it makes different design decisions. It's single threaded. It can optionally keep the content of your flow files in memory, which can make the processing really fast. And regardless of whether you choose to keep the content in memory or write it to disk in order to avoid heap exhaustion, no data is going to be persisted across restarts. So we've now handled one of our obstacles. We don't have to worry about the data duplication from data persistence across restarts. Stateless also runs an entire data flow as a single cohesive unit, meaning that if there is a processing failure anywhere in the flow, the entire transaction is rolled back. So that solves the issue of tight coupling between the consumer and the producer. So we've got two of our obstacles addressed just by using the stateless engine. Thirdly, we have to consider the issue of data reordering. Now, it's not a hard requirement that data that gets consumed from Kafka gets published back to Kafka in exactly the same ordering. Rather, the requirement is that the data cannot be reordered between transactions, meaning that if we consume a bunch of data, we do all the processing, and then we publish it back to Kafka in a single transaction, then we don't have to worry about data reordering. We can still support Kafka's exactly once semantics, even if the data gets reordered. And that can be handled in the data flow, and we'll talk about how to do that in just a minute. But once we've built this data flow, we need some way of running it using that stateless engine. And that's where the execute stateless processor comes in. This is a new processor in NiFi 1.15. And we're going to take a look at how we can use that in order to run our data flow once we build it. Now that we understand the obstacles and the underlying solution, let's take a look at how we can build that data flow. So I'm going to start here with a consume Kafka record 2.6 processor. This is going to pull some JSON records from a topic named charges. And because we want to make sure that we're doing this exactly once, we need to ensure that we have commit offsets set to false. Now this is a new property that's introduced in version 1.15 of NiFi. And this is basically telling our consumer that once it's pulled the data, don't commit those offsets to Kafka so that if we have some processing failure, we're able to roll back all of those uh, records that we've already consumed. So instead it allows our publisher to commit those offsets for us once everything's completed successfully. Next, we're going to partition the data. Some of the data coming in will have a customer ID field and other records are going to have a credit card number field. So we want to route that data to one of two lookup record processors. Each of these is going to hit a different MySQL database in order to enrich our data with both a first name and a last name. But we have two different lookups because we need to hit two different tables in our database based on the type of identifier that we have. Once we've performed all of that enrichment, we're going to send all of that data to a published Kafka record 2.6 processor. So this is going to take all of that enriched data and push it into a different Kafka topic. Now it's important to note that the configuration of this publisher is configured with use transactions set to true. We need to make sure that we're using transactions in order to guarantee that we make use of Kafka's exactly want semantics. But notice that there's no new property in this processor to tell it to commit those offsets from the consumer. Instead, that consumer, whenever it doesn't commit the offsets, it'll update our flow file with an attribute so that the producer automatically knows that it's responsible for committing those offsets for us. And once we've sent that enriched data to Kafka, we're going to route the data either to success or failure, depending on whether or not we successfully push that data. Now we're almost done. But remember, 
I said we have to ensure that all of the data sent to our publisher is done in a single transaction. So here's the trick to make that happen. First, we need to remove our connections going to our publisher. And we'll remove this one as well. And then we need to take all of these other components. So I'll select all, remove these. And we need to create a new process group that encompasses all of these. So once we've done that, we can come in here and create an output port and we'll call it success. We'll connect our lookup record processors to it. And then we can move up a level and we can connect that output or that process group to our published Kafka record processor. Successful output will go to published Kafka record and we'll create another failure output port here. And we'll route our failure connection there. Now the reason that we're doing this if we come in here and configure this process group, we also want to make sure that we set the same parameter context. The reason we're doing this is that we want to be able to update this process group outbound policy. We want to change that from stream when available, which is the default, to batch output. And we'll click apply. So what that does for us is that it changes this data flow so that nothing is going to leave this process group from its output ports until there's no data in this process group at all except for the data that's queued up in output ports. So that means that even if we have data coming in here going to both of these different lookup record processors, even if we pull a thousand records and only two go to this lookup record, processor and 998 go to this one, and this one takes a lot longer, that's okay because all of the data is going to leave the process group in a single batch. And so that's then going to come into our Kafka publisher in a single batch. And we need to connect its failure relationship also. And now we've finished building our data flow. It's time to go ahead and save it to the registry. So I'll right click, go to version, commit local changes. And I'll save that to the registry. But we don't want to run the data flow like this, of course. We want to make sure that we run it using the stateless engine. In version 1.15 of NiFi, we can make use of a new processor called Execute Stateless. Now this processor is going to allow us to take over a data flow that we've already created in NiFi and run it using the stateless engine. This is extremely powerful because it provides a great integration between traditional NiFi and stateless NiFi, so we can really capitalize on the advantages of both. And you know that makes sense. So let's configure it. Now the first configuration option that we have is where to find the data flow. We can use a local file or a URL, or we can change it to use NiFi registry. And that's what, I, what I'm going to do here. So the registry URL that I'm going to use is NiFi registry port 18080, the registry bucket name, and the name of our flow. I don't remember what that was, so I can actually come over here to change version, and I can see the name of the flow is Enriched Charges. 
So I can come back over here. And I could choose a specific version of the flow that I want to run. If I leave that blank, it's just going to fetch the most recent version of the flow. And that's what I want to do for now. Or alternatively, I could come over here and I could right click and I could say that I want to download a flow definition. And I could then configure this processor to point to that file or I could even upload that flow definition to some URL and then reference that URL within this processor in order to grab the data flow. And now for the input port, I don't need to specify anything because I'm not planning to send data into this processor. I'm only going to get data out of it. Uh, for the failure port, I'll use failure because that was the name of the port that we used in our data flow for failures. And there are several other different options here that we can configure. I think all of them are okay with the defaults except for the content storage strategy. Now I can store the content on disk if I want in order to avoid running out of memory, but we know that these messages are gonna be pretty small. So I'm actually going to store the content on heap. It'll be a little bit faster that way. And now I need to connect this to something. I could go ahead and auto terminate the success and failure relationships, but I can also add other processors to my data flow so that anything that comes out of this processor after it's finished running in the stateless engine can be processed further with traditional NiFi. So I'll just add an update attribute for the output. So anything that uh, is successfully transferred out of the stateless data flow will come to the output relationship and I'll create another update attribute here for the failure and the timeout conditions. Now remember we had a few different parameters that we had configured here in our parameter context. So we'll want to go ahead and set those parameters here as well. So for instance, I had a consumer group ID that was set to enrich charges. I'll go ahead and use that same value. If I don't enter any value for this particular parameter, it'll go ahead and use whatever was exported in that uh, parameter context. But for sensitive properties, we know that those don't get persisted in our data flow. So we do need to create a parameter for that. So for the database password, I'll go ahead and set that. and we can apply those changes, and now we can start it. It'll take just a second to uh, download that flow and go ahead and initialize. And we can see the data starts streaming out of here now. And so as we refresh, we can see data coming through, but if we wanna get a little bit more insight as to what's going on in this uh, particular processor, we can actually come over here to the counters. And for any of the counters that get updated within our flow, we're going to see those updated by this execute stateless processor. So we can actually see the number of records that were received by consume Kafka and the number of records that were sent by publish Kafka. And since we're using exactly one semantics, we should certainly see that those numbers are going to be equal. And as we hit refresh, we're going to see those numbers continue to increase. So that's all there is to it. Go ahead and give it a go. Leave it running and you can kill your Kafka cluster, terminate your network connection, you can kill NiFi, whatever you'd like. You'll still see that it's going to provide you with those coveted exactly once semantics. But if you have any problems, hit me up on the NiFi mailing list, users at nifi.apache.org. And of course, I'll post a link to the data flow in the comments. If you find this content helpful and you'd like to learn more, please do like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Take care.